Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abiding by the Afterbirth Plus. Eight wins in a row, baby! Well, no, we're, we're running for eight wins in a row. We got seven right now. I like it. I like these stats. I don't really love our damage or our HP, so it turns out I do not love these stats. That's okay. Do I do I understand the D7? Is this one of those items I, I just fail to uh, comprehend? Is it one of those ones where you're like, I don't like what I got, so let's reroll the whole thing? The whole room, that is? Hold on. I've recently adjusted my chair for better ergonomics, so I have... Uh, my armrests are in like a weird spot. I think I like this. Yeah, yeah, this feels right. Hold on, hold on. Nothing. Is it only when you kill an enemy, then, that you get the reward? Like, I fight the enemies, I decide I don't like what they give me, I re-roll, and then... I mean, I really should understand how to use this, don't get me wrong, but I don't, so... <laughs> I mean, the, the end, I guess. But isn't it... like, it's... oh, let's go. It's coded for on the seed, right? Like, whatever the boss gives us is coded for. So, if I don't like what the boss gives me, I could fight them again, but the... The end result would be the same. I think. I think. I don't hope, but I think. Help. Okay. Hold on. Let, let's try this. I want to see how this goes. I also wonder, like, is, is this one of those... I, I get this in Glowing Hourglass confused all the time. Sorry for the isaac focus start to this episode. And it's the worst kind of Isaac start because, like, I'm talking about Isaac, but... It's the rare Isaac start where I also have no idea what I'm talking about. Usually I have some idea of what I'm talking about, just enough to, to say things that seem plausible but are actually very wrong. Um, but this time, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. We'll see what we get. Because I'll be honest with you, you know, I don't really want to fight you again. <laughs> you gave me something good, so I'm glad I don't have to fight you again. Um, but I think I will be contented to sacrifice a spirit heart, now that we have so many, to go to our curse room and see what we get in there. We're going to try to pick up some extra leverage. Now, because I'm killing enemies, I'm like, does this work? Hold on, hold on. You just hold the front door, okay? We don't like what we got in here. We got nothing. It's garbage. What happens if we hit the button? We've respawned the enemies. Okay, so this is not smart in this particular room because they uh, don't drop anything at all. <laughs> I thought maybe... So it's glowing out hourglass that would do a similar... Oh, okay. That would do a similar thing, but it would actually teleport you outside of the room. So I'm just going to level with you. I actually did not want to play that guy, but after I walked into him, I'll play him. All right. So be it. Oh, yeah. Life goes on. Long after the coins that jingle are gone. Take me down. I was hoping to get two extra cents, and then we could go uh, maybe get an arcade on the next floor. And if we got an arcade on the next floor, oh, boy. Uh, the places we would go. You don't normally get coins here, so I'm thinking that's like a chosen coin. I'm thinking that's a coin that could take us into outer space. It's gonna work. It's gonna happen. I'm a little upset. What a cursed sound, by the way. Anyway, well, take me down to the next floor. We're, we're happy with where we stand. We got some HP. That HP is deal with the devil juice. Very good stuff. And Curse of the Unknown doesn't matter, because I can't count to our HP regardless. What is it, one? <laughs> I've never heard of it. What is that, like a lowercase l? <laughs> How are you supposed to do math with that? How am I doing? I'm doing well, uh, thank you for asking, hypothetically, rhetorically. Um, I'm, I'm doing well, but, you know, like, thank you for your rhetorical ask, because i got to assume kind of what questions you would like me to answer. I, you know, I'm not getting live feedback on the fly. Um, had a good weekend, took Saturday completely off, didn't get up to much, like, you know, because there's a stay-at-home order, basically. <laughs> we got some, some takeout, and I gotta tell you, I, I ate a, a type of cuisine I very rarely eat. 
Not that it's exotic, it's actually one of the least exotic foods, I think, in North America. But I had, like, American Chinese food. I would say I, I have it only a maximum. That's not great. Um, I have it a maximum of once every eight months. This was my once every eight months. And uh, I gotta tell you, I, oh, come on. I, I really, like, of all the foods I rarely eat, that one is up there in terms of, like, my enjoyment of it. For sure. Why do I eat it rarely? Well, it's not Kate's favorite. Um, and then, like, you know, when it comes to eating in and, or, uh, you know, getting takeout, I should say, or delivery in Vancouver, you got a lot of great options. So, like, something along the lines of a, a P.F. Chang's or a, you know, Panda Express type, because we don't have those chains up here. But, you know, along the same lines, it might not be the first thing that pops into your head. But it's, it's the kind of food that I probably wouldn't suggest every time, but I would never say no to it unless I had it recently. I, I It's one of those things where I'm like, I don't even want to tell you what dish I had, because the dish, like, doesn't matter. But I will say, when it comes to American Chinese food, am I a rice guy or a noodle guy? I'm a, I'm a rice guy. Um, and then do I get uh, beef in a sauce? Pork in a sauce or chicken in a sauce? I get chicken in a sauce. So it was some kind of deep fried brown chicken served over fried rice that was the color of tar. And then like I, the, the way that they do the like the vegetables at uh, American Chinese food places, I don't know. Like the broccoli is it's like poached. But also greasy and thus delicious. But they also like. <laughs> I was laughing because you know normally when you you get broccoli, you just kind of get like the floret. You get the little tree part at the top. But we were pulling broccoli out of our food. That was like I'm pretty sure this is like the stock. <laughs> pretty sure this is like the the part of the broccoli that you're. I mean, I wouldn't say not supposed to eat, but anyway, we we ate every part of the buffalo, and it was good. It, don't get me wrong, it was good. It was also insanely cheap. As you would expect, but dude, I love uh, I love some American Chinese food, without a doubt. I will say, or because American and Canadian Chinese food are very very similar, but slightly slightly different. Because in Canada, one of the most popular dishes, and I'm I'm not having a giggle here, one of the most popular dishes is a dish called chicken balls, and it is not what you think. By the way, no uh, no access to the item room. A lot of fun. Um, but it's alright, I'll bring the fun. Um, it, it, legitimately one of the most popular dishes in Canadian Chinese food cuisine is called chicken balls. They are deep fried balls of chicken, almost in like a pancake batter and then deep fried. They're fine, you know, it's like, I'm not gonna, if, if you eat it, I'm not gonna say it's a food for kids. But it is like, if you ask any Canadian, like, eight-year-old their favorite Chinese food dish, you're gonna get some, like, hoity-toity ones who think they're, like, hot stuff. Oh, I like chicken chow mein. Okay, congrats. All your friends are saying chicken balls, though. It's like a like a little Canadian Chinese food chicken nugget. But, uh... I can get down with it, dude. It's, it's, it's a completely different... I mean, I'm not trying to suggest that it's authentic at all. Um, all I'm trying to suggest is that it doesn't have to be authentic to, to be delicious. So you can tell what I think about the D7, by the way, because of the fact that we're tossing it away to take the bean, an item I routinely toss away to do, like, literally anything else, or to take anything else. But this run is actually not that bad. Mostly, it, it, this just goes to show you, like, you need either tears or damage, and then HP. You don't necessarily need both tiers and damage. I mean, our damage is not even that bad, but our tiers are not <laughs> also not really that good. But that that alone is is sending us to a place of like some average uh, quality on this run. But anyway, yeah, it was basically that. And then like, at the risk of of getting dunked on, I, I again I recognize this is something people dunk for. Um, at the risk of getting dunked on. Um, what have my viewing habits been lately? Like, it depends. I haven't been watching that much TV. When I'm watching TV, um, I'm usually, like, it depends on, like, what's going on with the baby. If I'm on baby duty and the baby's asleep, 
bouncing the baby in the bouncer and playing a little Rocket League usually. Um, but you know, if uh, for watching some television, watch a little Netflix, watch this show, uh, We Are the Champions. Watch three or four episodes of that. I would recommend it if you haven't seen it. I know I haven't seen The Queen's Gambit yet. It actually got announced today as uh, Netflix's most popular original series in its most popular limited series in its first month of release let's put it that way which is a lot of um you know superlatives or like a lot of uh filters but at the same time it's still really like impressive i mean netflix produces a lot of limited series so i i should watch it i know i know i should watch it i i just you know actually haven't been watching that much tv mostly because i've been playing rocket league instead but um, we are the champions. I recommend it. If you like like Christopher Guest movies about um, weird competitions or subcultures, I know that sounds judgmental. I'm in kind of a weird subculture for a profession myself. So you know, it's not the pot calling the kettle black. It's it's the pot going like, hey look, it's some kettles that remind me of me. I don't know. Wait, anyway. It's a documentary basically about uh, unusual sports competitions or like arts competitions. So we watched an episode about like this hot pepper eating contest where people were eating like peppers that were hotter than the hottest pepper ever certified by the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, watched an episode about the yo-yo championships, which is really cool. Very interesting. Watched an episode about fantasy hairstyling. Um, so a bit of a spooky run now, especially because we haven't gotten a key in 25 floors, but um, I would recommend it. I mean, it's, it's narrated by Dwight from The Office. It's a little cheesy. I would not call it high art. Um, but it's, uh, it's an entertaining diversion and uh, a nice break from watching so many shows where people just cook uh, like incredible French pastries. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but... You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to mix it up a little bit. But what what are you going to dunk on me for? Okay, it's basically like, just say, kind of had like a always on Hamilton situation going on in our house lately. And I'm for it. Like, we watched it in June, uh, and I liked it a lot. Again, I feel the need to defend myself. When I watched it, I did not think to myself, whoa, that Thomas Jefferson's a really cool guy who's completely devoid of any problematic things in his history. But I said, you know what? Great songs and a, uh, a very catchy, uh, a very well-written play, I guess, is what I'm getting at. And I'm not a connoisseur of theater, but that was my take on the subject from a genuine perspective. Um, and then it kind of like the earworms kind of stuck in my head. But I watched it again, you know, uh, with my mom when she's here. And, uh, you know, that kind of like ignited the renaissance for Hamilton. Uh, within Kate, I think, and then Kate's been, like, watching it, and, uh, she, she put it on the other day. It had only been, like, a week and a half since we last saw it, and I was like, I don't know if I want to watch this again. And then, like, by the third song, I was like, nah, it's still really good. <laughs> I'm normally not, like, a heavy repeat viewer of the same content over and over, which I, I understand the irony inherent in that statement when you consider the kind of content I produce. But, uh, yeah, I was, I'm still getting something out of it. Still. Plus, what else are you going to watch on Disney Plus? You've already seen The Mandalorian. What are you going to watch? Uh, Forky asks a question? Come on, man. What I should be doing is pivoting off of the Hamilton enjoyment. Not that there's anything wrong with, like, you know, watching something you enjoy. Um, but pivoting off of that and watching a little bit more musical theater. Because I, have many times in my life, uh, espoused the belief that, like, I'm not a fan of musical theater because... And I, I took, like, too much of an Aaron... S oh, no, dude. Too much of, like, an Aaron Sorkin sort of approach to it. Like, any time people are singing a song, they could just be having a conversation instead. Counterpoint. Songs, uh, are fun. Dude, this, we needed this. We needed that spirit heart. Um, not saying everything should be a musical, like... Although, apparently, that's, like, the way that the musical theater world works. We're just waiting on every single product to be turned into, uh, a musical. 
We want PhD, because we, we really needed like an emergency store of pills if possible. Um, it's a really, really good time to have a good and healthy donation machine. Give me three cents, please. I'm willing to take it one further because I want to buy the card too. That's not bad. As long as we save it for a, you know, an apt use case, this is pretty sensible. Honestly, this is a pretty apt use case. I'm happy with it. I think we're going to try to make it work. We could use the speed. Feeling a little sluggish. Um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much been the my life in content recently. And then, you know, on the YouTube side of things, playing a little Slasher's Keep. It's a lot of fun. Playing a little chess, having some fun with that. And, and honestly, flattered uh, to be... Still knocking out subscriber milestones. A little slower than I anticipated they would be happening in January. But I do want to... Or when, February, maybe, when I came up with them. But I do also want to say, A, thank you. And B, just because they're happening slower than the projection that I made in January. That wasn't really a projection. <laughs> I actually think, by the way, we want the soul here. The Halo, I think it's kind of overrated and overstated. And I don't really care about getting the getting the key piece, you know? If you want me to get the key piece, how about giving me, like, some useful items and not taking me to, you know, one step away from death's door? Uh, and then I'll show you some gratitude and, and remove my entitled attitude. No, i show you some gratitude and remove my entitled attitude. Anyway. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. Oh, video games. Yeah, they're good. Full stop. I, I made a tweet the other day. I can't believe it It didn't take off, dude. What is the tweet? Well, I mean, it got like 800 likes. It's not bad for me. It's actually pretty good. Um, but it's just Phil Spencer. You know, the ex head of Xbox. Um, CEO of Xbox. And... Uh, the, the tweet, the body of the tweet, which is where the joke happens, just says, Imagine dot 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 gaming, but gaming is spelled wrong with an E after the M. I don't know why, but in my head, it's like the funniest tweet I've ever written. I, I, don't, I don't have an explanation for the joke. The joke is not really like a coherent thought. It's just a vibe. It's one of those, those Zoomer jokes. Like... Like, there, every generation has, like, you know, different jokes that resonate, right? Like, I feel like when I think of boomer comedians, I think of, like, Yakov Smirnov. You know, the guy who's like, in Soviet Russia, vodka drinks you. And then Gen X is, like, you know, Bill Hicks. That's like, man, you know, it's like that. And then millennial humor is a lot of, like, Mitch Hedberg. And then Zoomer humor... I'm telling you, dude, I keep coming back. I think it's one of the funniest things I've ever said when I was describing Zoomer humor. And I was like, it's just kind of like a picture of a jar of peanut butter, but the B and the P are exchanged, so it says B-nut putter. And I gotta tell you, out of, out of all of them, I think I'm most... I'm, I relate most to the Zoomer humor right now, or at least I'm trying to. You know, I my innate... Whenever I try to tell a joke... I always default to, like, I, I think I slip into that Gen X style of comedian. Let's say, you know, I don't want to go off on a rant here. But, uh, does anybody think that Sisyphus should buy stock in an eleva uh, elevator corporation? I mean, come on. Lifting that stone every... Anyway, you get the general gist of things. But, um, you know, it, it, I, I, I resent that. I think that's old, that's old hat and is unnecessary. The real meat. We gotta start getting into that Zoomer humor, dude. Where your tweet is just like, I don't know. Like a picture of Elijah Wood. Get me out of there. And then it just says... This Frodo Baggins looking MF. You know? <laughs> I think like that's the kind of stuff that could... That could pop off. But I feel like it's very risk uh, reward, you know? It's feast or famine. Those tweets either get like three likes and people go, are you okay? Or they get like 40,000 likes and people go, a -six 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 -six, which is, I believe, Zoomer parlance for that made me laugh. You know what I'm talking about. S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S K S
He really said it. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm glad I said it, okay? I'm glad I said it. This run. How about it? Imagine. Gaming. Um, what do I have to say? Um, well, I don't have to say anything. I can say whatever I want. I can say nothing. You say it best when you say nothing at all. Allison Krauss. Um... But what I what I want this run to do is to give me uh, good stats because at present we are bereft of them. Not horrible, not horrible, but not in a good place. Um, starring Kristen Bell and uh, Ted Danson and the guy from Midsummer. Not the vape lord, but the guy who was writing his thesis, uh, and then the th spoilers of the topic of his thesis is lifted halfway through. It's not a major spoiler, it's part of the rising action. I would still encourage you to see the film. The film has a great Zoomer vibe to it. They, they reference the movie Austin Powers in it. That's how you know it's going to be an effective horror film. Okay, so we got HP. I'm actually, like, not disappointed to get the HP. I'm pretty stoked. Uh... However, we're hoping that, you know, oh, yeah, kickstart my run, though you never stop, because I, oh, yeah, baby. When we started this run, all we needed, needed was a tears up. Years gone by, I'd say we didn't get a tears up. You know what I'm talking about? NL, are you okay? Listen, something's wrong. Not with me, I mean, that's the pill we just got. Um... I just <laughs> really like, I just really like the song Kickstart My Heart, because it's so comical to me. What is it? The first line of that song is just so, when I get high, I get high on speed. Like, does that sound like something that a speed addict would say? I mean, I guess maybe in a literal sense, but I don't know. It just, it strikes me as one of those things that like, you would say when you wanted to sound cool in like fifth grade. Oh yeah, I this guy's definitely on speed right now. <laughs> Come on. He thinks Blastoise is better than Charizard. He's definitely on crack. I forget what he says after that. I'm like, lit up like a Christmas tree. Something like that. <laughs> then I I think I like any and I've I've said this before, but it's probably been years. I like any rock and roll song that gets self-referential about rock and roll. So, I think, like, in Kickstart My Heart, the bridge gets a little bit more mellow, and he goes, oh, Kickstart My Heart. When we started this game, all we needed, needed was a laugh. Years gone by, I'd say we kicked some, you know what. Is when I'm on stage, hitting the rage, adrenaline pump through my veins. I said, say we're still kicking. You know what? And I'm like, man, this guy, he's like, he's got a lot of bluster, huh? How about that? You see, he's like, you ever hear the expression from Ego Raptor, um, show, don't tell? Why don't you show me that you're kicking A instead of telling me that you're kicking A? Like, I'm not suggesting that Vince Neil is incapable of kicking some A, especially back in the 1980s when that song was released. I'm just saying, like, you know, when you have to sing about it that much, it it, it calls it into question, I think. It makes me think that you're sensitive about your A-kicking ability. It's just kind of like a... it's farcical, you know? It's the same reason that, to be honest with you, I truly don't believe that Iggy Azalea is that fancy. Well, I guess technically she doesn't say she's so fancy. That's Charlie XCX who sings the hook. If anything, um, Iggy Azalea says, First things first, I'm the realist. Drop the bass, let the whole place feel this. And I'm still in the murder business. I can hold it down like I'm teaching lessons in physics. You should want a bad like me. <laughs> like this. Something, 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 something just like this. Cup of goose, cup of gray, cup of Chris, cup of with a cup of rip on my wrist, on my wrist. Get the da, da, ba, never chase that nothing. I don't remember the rest of the song at all, except for when she says, "I'm so fancy." You already know. Some problems with that song as well. I know we've analyzed it before, but what does she mean when she's in the fast lane 
from LA to Tokyo. There's no road that goes there. You're in the fast lane in the sky. It doesn't even make any sense. There's so many different airways. You wouldn't need like a... Okay, you know what? Like, just just get over it. Just just get over it, dude. The song's old. The, the time is past. Embrace tranquility, okay? You don't need to keep referencing the same song from the summer of 2013. I mean, if you're gonna reference the same songs from 2013, like, don't reference Fancy by Iggy Azalea. Like, at least re reference some churches. You know what I mean? Some churches. Churches with a V. Or some Lourdes. God, I hope I'm never parodied on South Park. Like, I, I'm not going to flatter myself by suggesting it's, you know, in the cards. We, we, you know, we're not at that level of fame, obviously. But, like, can you imagine, like, Lord is, like, you know, she's, like, a 17-year-old girl at the time. And then South Park comes out with an episode. I, I don't even know what the point is. But they go, I'm Lord, 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 Lord. And then, like, for the rest of probably your life... You have to hear that from, like, one out of every ten people you meet, probably. That's crazy, dude. That'd be so annoying. I don't know why, but in my head, the fact that Matt Damon probably got it for, like, a decade after Team America. Matt Damon. For some reason, that doesn't strike me as, like, such a, such a cursed fate. <laughs> So I'm sure he was like, yeah, I get it, it's Team America. But for like a for a teenage girl, you know, I mean, it, it, it just sucks that the argument against that is always like one of two things. A, it's funny. Okay, maybe. I don't really get it. It's funny because, you know, it says it in like a weird voice. <clears throat> funny because it says it in weird voices? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pot calling the kettle black again, I suppose. Um, hold on, what do you got for me? Magic scab? And three boxes of despair. Take me to the next floor, please. Um, but then, like, you know, she's she's just a kid, and life is a nightmare. You know, it's harder to deal with that. We are a grown adult. You know, if if South Park kind of like makes fun of you, you're like whatever. If you're like 16, you're still like your brain's getting all developed. But anyway, and then the other thing is people go, oh wow, she's rich. So, but I, but yeah, but like she, the, the joke doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> like I, I just don't get it. Does nobody else see how absolutely fricked this is? Anyway, I don't, sorry, I don't mean to... Don't mean to be rude to... Trey Parker and Matthew Stone. Can I tell you as well, by the way? I watched an episode of The Simpsons on Friday. When I had... Uh, I was indisposed. I don't know, I'm making it sound so weird. It's like I'm, I don't have to justify watching an episode of The Simpsons. I, was, I just want you to know it wasn't like I sat down and was like, "Let's watch The Simpsons." It was a situation where I was like, uh, "What's on in this forced break that I have to take?" And then it, like it was The Simpsons was the best option, and uh, it was an episode from 2010, which makes it the most recent episode of The Simpsons I have seen. I know it's like the oldest analysis in the world. But what happened, dude? What happened to that show? It was, a, it was the episode where they actually go to the Vancouver Olympics. So I was like, oh, this will be like a nice like local touch, maybe. Um, you know, not really. But then secondarily, there was like a... They, Marge and Homer go to like a curling rink. And then Homer goes on like this weird two-minute Shakespearean soliloquy about how like important curling is and I'm like I just don't like what's the joke that Homer doesn't sound like that am I even gonna get anything now cuz I didn't ask for that I know it sounds like overly like anal but like I just don't get the joke maybe I'm the problem but like shouldn't if the joke's not funny, shouldn't it be able to, like, fall back on making sense? 
Like, if it doesn't make me laugh, at least I should be able to look at the the rising action and the punchline and the resolution and be like, at least it was cogent. But apparently, you know. Anyway. Yes, we don't need to get, like, too into it. But, um... It's crazy to think that that was an episode from 2010 and it was clearly, like, kind of in a bad spot where it seemed a little out of ideas. And then... It's been 10 years since then. And it's still on the air. Sometimes I even see it, like, trend on Twitter on Sundays when it's, you know, airing. Uh, and it's not live, you know what I mean, though. Not... Uh, I hate it. This run is not set in stone, by the way. But the chest will probably be good for us because we have a good luck uh, stat. Um, but anyway. Sometimes I, I still see a trend. Which is just insane to me. I And I don't mean to call anybody else's programming choices into question. Because, I mean, you've heard what I watch. But... Like, people are still not only watching The Simpsons, but also talking about it. I honestly just did not know that, like, every Sunday there's still a group of people that are like, Yeah, let's... Dude, you see, you watching this new Simpsons episode? It's crazy. You'll never guess what Homer got up to. Family Guy and, like, I think American Dad is over now. But, like, Family Guy and American Dad kind of made sense to me. I, I think that my honest opinion, Lois, is that they are worse shows. Or at least at their best, they were worse than The Simpsons at their best. But I kind of understood that it, it hit like a different um, demographic to some extent, you know? Like The Simpsons were always kind of like... They, they were targeted at like the general audience. The idea that, you know, you could sit down and watch this with your whole family and, uh, you know, everybody involved would get something out of it. Family Guy is more like, you know, if you're, and this is not meant as a bad thing, but if your humor kind of perpetually stays at that, like, you know, 15 to 20 year old threshold, then you're like, this is the funniest show on the planet, and then after that, you're like, I think I hate everything about this, maybe? I don't know. I'm not trying to be too judgmental about it. It's, it's not my scene anymore. It's also funny, because I think, like, Family Guy, and, and like, a lot of these, uh, like, a quote-unquote adult cartoons, I feel like they were originally subversive, because the predominant comedy format at the time was, like, three-camera sitcoms, uh, fat dad, hot wife, you know, snobby or snotty kids, the wife hates the husband, like, there were so many shows cut from that, like, everybody loves Raymond Mold. And then, like, it's weird, because those shows are now so old that Family Guy has almost become what it's satirizing. It's like, <laughs> it, it ended up being so successful that it's no longer, like, a subversion of the trend anymore. Instead, you're just like, wow, that's still on the air, huh? Anyway, that's that's my amateur analysis of, of Family Guy. Which I think everybody was asking for, begging for, coming into this episode. And Elf, please, please, finally tell us what you think about Family Guy. Um, it's the kind of thing that makes you laugh and cry. Squam, <laughs> squam. So is that, is that over, or is that show just going to go forever? I bet it, like, does really well. Like, again, I want to be the first to acknowledge that I also am basically running a long-running series that has become a caricature. <laughs> so I, more than most, I think, understand where Seth MacFarlane and the Fox Media uh, cartoon company are coming from. I think that's a fox jam, anyway. It must be. Okay, don't don't throw your life away. We don't want it. You don't want no part of this, do we? 
It's called the hourglass. It slows down time, makes it easier for you to <laughs> murder enemies. Sounds like I do want it. That's a good movie. You ever see Walk Hard? Of of the John C. Riley, I love John C. Riley. I think that his portrayal of uh, Doctor Steve Brule is sublime. As a uh, unbelievable uh, character acting performance. His movies, I mean, I like him in more serious roles. I know that sounds crazy, but like John C. Riley is really good in like Magnolia. As a comic actor, I find him hilarious, but I find his movie selection sometimes a little lacking. But I must admit that Walk Hard got me good. It got me good. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'm going to grade the old course. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks so much. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time. See ya!